You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. Um, it's two weeks to election 2020. The minister, the special prosecutor Martin Amido has left your government for you. He said you're interfering in his work. You're not allowing him to be independent. He has left. Daniel Domelovo is on leave. Clearly, you don't look good on the corruption side of things going into these elections. No, we look good on the corruption How? side of things. Uh, look, the, the inertia in fighting corruption was one of the main reasons why John Ma, President Mahama lost 2016 by the margins that he did. Corruption, doom so. These are the two biggest things. And then the general um, attitude of government. You haven't seen that same inertia in fighting corruption in, in Akufado's government. You have not. I mean, look at the effort the president put in to appoint to establish the office of the special prosecutor. Look at the effort that was put in. Look at the resources that have been advanced to, to him. I mean, I have heard a lot of neutral commentators dispute the grounds for uh, Mr. Amidu's resignation. They thought that those grounds are not tenable. That if you've done an audit, you take it to the president. And the president says, why don't you give a chance for some of these people that said, because the audit is a warning. You are saying that if these things are not checked, it could lead to danger. So you are giving a warning to avert the danger. So if they say, bring it to the attention of those who are charting the course to see what their reaction is. How does that constitute interference? But let's even agree that he believes it's interference. For, to, for me, it's the will to fight corruption that is crucial. The effort that the president put in to appoint that office, the resources that were given to him, shows a clear intent and determination to fight corruption. It didn't look that like you didn't that. From his resilience, he said his hands were tied behind his back and was told to engage in a boxing bout. That clearly is a problem. You his, cannot say... His hands were tied behind his back because the, uh, of the Ajapa report. No, there was no physical infrastructure to help him operate. He has but when you listen, two prosecutors, three investigators. When, when, when you listen to the response from the presidency, it's very clear that a lot of those claims we're making are not tenable. Are not tenable. You think there was an error on your party's side to have chosen a foreigner, quote and unquote, into your government as a special prosecutor? But that actually is, is a strength. That but on hindsight now, do you regret? Do you personally think that it was a regretful? A lot of people think that uh, from what has happened, um, his, he probably does not have the temperament for the job with hindsight depending uh, from what has happened today. But at the time that he was appointed, it was almost a natural choice. I, I, I personally, I believe that he works best solo when he has absolute control, no uh, bureaucracy and procedures to... He, he, he works best. That's what I believe. Um, so at the time, because of the work he had done on his own, he had established a credential that, that, that was hard to find. Now the fact that he was from the opposite party and the president actually went for him is a strength of the president. There were many people who thought he's NDC, he's so-so, so-so, so-so. And you heard some of those stories. But the fact that the president had the strength to still go for him shows you the determination to fight corruption. So that cannot be used against the president. But, but his resignation will be used against you by the electorates, don't you think? Uh, no. Not after the statement came out clarifying the matter. And since the statement came out, what does he say? That somebody visited him at home. He hasn't told us what transpired. He hasn't told us whether he was visited to be bought off. No. We visit each other. Um, um, he said uh, he has received threats. He hasn't told us the nature of the threats. He hasn't told us where the threat is coming from. If you remember, in 2012, he lost his position as an attorney general. He made those same claims that his life was being threatened. They were sending him robbers after him. They were tying the sons behind his back. He made those same claims. 
you know. So um, I don't know how serious to take those claims. If there are threats, you should be able to identify the source of the threats. But a man in, in that in that position, even me, if there are threats against me, I should be able to say that this person and that person and that person, whether on social media or or physically or whatever, and and get a law enforcement. Aid. So I don't. I, I, after the explanation came. And then he himself stated that he resigned because of interference. And he identified the interference on the Ejapa thing. And what was the interference? That the president said he should uh, uh, show it to the auditees to see what they can do about it. He says it's interference. I don't see, and many neutral commentators have, have said, they said that they don't see how that constitutes interference. On December 7, Ghanaians will go to the polls. The ballot paper in front of them for some reason has number one and number two being Nana Kufado and John Mahama. What do those two options represent in your estimation for the voter who goes to the Oh, the, the um, number one is always the best. Number one is Beyond the, the literal best. meaning of the figures. Number one is always the best. Mm -hmm. it's the, one position allows people to identify you much easier and all of that. But one is always the best. There are great secondary schools in this country who have their motto either the first or the first. But let me tell you something interesting. In this country, in the Fourth Republic, every incumbent president who is seeking re-election has the number one position. So Jerry Rawlings in, in 1996 had the number one position and he won re-election. John Kufour in uh, 2004 President seeking a re-election had, right. had in my one position. Akufado as president in 2020. Why don't, why don't you have to talk about John Mahama? I'll, I'll come to it. Okay. Akufado in, in the, uh, uh, 2020 mm -hmm. as president seeking a re-election has the number one position. The only time that an incumbent president in the Fourth Republic was seeking re-election and didn't get a number one position was John Mahama in 2016. And you know what happened to him? He was John 316. He didn't have the number one. <laughs> you know what happened to him? So these are the literal numerology Absolutely. Stuff, but Absolutely. on the hard, what are the, what can you use to symbolize these two individuals on the ballot? These are some of the symbols we're talking about. But beyond these symbols, the performance is what is key. And that he has, he has left massive I, infrastructure I, I, for you to I, benefit I have, from. To, I have told you about the free SHS, the new regions, um, uh, the digitization of the economy that okay. is going on. Okay. Okay. So when you for, say for more, to do more, yeah. what are you going to do? We're going to deepen free SHS. We're going to industrialize this country. This is the only government in you've the world. You've already fourth. said that. You, free SHS you've done. Industrial, you claimed you were going to do one district, one but factory. This, so this, this, this is the only government in the Fourth Republic that has an industrial plan. Has a plan. As we speak, 232 factories are in various stages of completion. But 76 are up and running. If in the next four years we dip in it in another 100 common stream, do you know what that will mean? You, we, I heard on your program... Mm. The one example, Casa de Ropa, that this is a company set up in Gomua Betiadi or somewhere, processing sweet potato. The people in that whole region, the, the, the basic uh, occupation was sweet potato. And um, they, because there wasn't enough money, they were doing uh, charcoal, charcoal business and you know, cutting down trees and all of that. When this one factory went there, and provided a market for sweet potato. Nobody is now burning charcoal. All the peasant producers are now farming sweet potato on a massive scale. Their income is guaranteed because the factory takes all that they produce. The factory is processing them into sweet potato mm. chips, mm. into bread, into pizza, and all of that. Can you imagine a hundred of such factories spread throughout the country? using the local product. What that will do for the livelihood. But in of four the years you have a few you're listing. In four years, you have a few of these factories listing. Why should we trust you? You know, you, you have to get the basics. The the 
it, it, we, we moved away from the place where the government just takes money and sets up a factory. Private sector enterprise, private sector principles. Government is not doing that. So you, Moro, uh, uh, Yumaru, you come from KJB, the major uh, farming activity there is cashew. You take a proposal to establish a cashew processing factory in KJB. The, the local assembly agrees with the concept that to benefit the local people. The ministry set up for that purpose agrees. They recommend you to a bank. The bank is going to subject your business plan to technical and uh, financial and assessment. commercial okay. assessment. When, they, when you pass that, then they give you some money. Government then comes in to provide you some additional support. So the rigor delays the process. But as we speak, 232 uh, business ideas have passed the okay. rigor and then various stages. Wait well. for the next four years. Let about 100 of them be up and running, and then you see. Thank you. Nana Okomia, uh, we'll be seeing indeed uh, what the electorates decide.